Well, it's holiday season. Wishing you all a beautiful holiday season wherever you are in the world. In this case, the corn tank. And so here in the tank, nothing especially new. I really am pleased with the uh, sword tails that have grown up so nicely. Uh, so they're all homegrown sword tails. And I told you, I, I like sword tails. And for a long while, it was hard to get them. And so here we are. And of course you have that beta that I was showing you before. Look at how the color changes as it moves across the tank here. It's, it's blue now. And then it gets to be red. And you can see it's almost like a glowing color. Uh, it changes color as it swims. Oh sure, I'm taking your picture so you're going to hide up the top there, gulping some air, I guess. Huh? Anyway, if I move away from it, I'm sure it'll come back swimming around again. But anyway, uh, nothing new except those, those angelfish are getting bigger. The four marbled angels, if you will. Um, the plants are doing well. That Ludwigia like, back in the right hand corner and now over in the left hand side too is just a huge plant. There, there's that better. Let's see if I can show you the redness. See the red in the fins? Now it just moved into where it turns less blue and more red. There we go. I'm sorry. Keeping up with it, swimming is kind of tough. But anyway, interesting, my wife found this fish. And she was amazed by the way the colors changed. And you can see that bright red come out against the light blue. We did, as I think I told you in the last video, a pickup on uh, what they call Black Friday here in our country, uh, some quarries. Uh, which were typically four dollars, which is a good price to start with on half price. And so we picked up five of them and ended up getting an extra one, six. And I see one or two of them on a regular basis here, but uh, the, the tank is so well planted that any fish can hide and just not show up. And so we uh, have that, and of course that Amazon sword in the center continues to be the centerpiece of this tank. And off to the right, you can barely see it, but the Madagascar lace plant is not thriving in the shadows of that Loguigia, but it's got a great root system and uh, uh, has some narrow leaves, and so it's not thriving in terms of growing as much as just hanging in there. And I, that's my favorite plant of all. And when you have one that can really grow out, it can be such an amazing centerpiece for a tank as I had in Richmond, Virginia many, many years ago. When I say many years ago, I'm talking about, let's see, it was 1975. Uh, no, earlier than that. So in the early 70s, we moved down there, uh, which would be 30, almost 50 years ago. Oh my God, half a century ago. And I had, the first time I ever found a Madagascar lace plant, and it thrived in that tank, in a tank this size, it grew to almost fill the center of the tank. Never seen it like that since. It lasted probably at six months before it went through its cycle. And uh, I wasn't recording pictures of things back then. <laughs> so I have no, uh, you're gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, maybe it's just a fish story, but I'm telling you, it uh, really was exactly what I'm describing for you. Okay. Here we have, of course, the bow tank. Both of those are, for those that are new to our audience here, 55-gallon uh, tanks, and uh, have been around a long while. Uh, interesting here, you see the two 
I'll call them calico, I'm not sure if that's truly true, angelfish in the center. They're a mated pair, and about every three or four weeks they lay eggs on one of the Amazon sword plants, and, uh, and uh, you know, a day later they're gone. But meanwhile, the male, I assume it's the male, uh, protects the female. The one in the background is the, the male, and you can see him move out and sort of challenge uh, anything that comes near the two of them, especially uh, the other angelfish. And up in the upper left-hand corner you have an angelfish which looks similar only in the sense of having that light color. Uh, it doesn't have the markings that these two have. And he's constantly challenging the male here. But uh, when they have eggs on one of those uh, Amazon sword plants down in the center here, uh, they keep all the other fish in here. There's quite a few fish as you can see. Uh, up in the corner, and so uh, they aggressively protect that breeding site. The neons, as you can see here, are doing very well. Uh, they add a, a very nice color uh, flashing around in this tank. There are a good dozen neons in the tank you just saw, the corner tank, but there's, they tend to hide. They were on the smaller side when we bought them, and so they probably are hiding out more uh, to protect themselves. But you can see here, uh, they're doing very well, and I'm very pleased with them. I'm a, I'm a, a fan of the Neons, and uh, I've had troubles with them in that corner tank some time ago, and lost an entire school over time. But the ones here in the bow tank do just fine. just fine. You see our a couple of our black mollies have been moved out here so there's about six of them out here and you have those um, oh, what kind of barbs um, oh I forget the name now but there's that mated pair of angels they hang out together all the time. There is a red betta in here someplace and uh, he tends to be hidden most of the time. And this is the bow tank. This better is red, but it gets in a different light. So it came out front, and of course it disappeared in the back. Here it comes. Now let's see if we can catch the change of colors. Beautiful blue body and red fins. And the right light, those red fins change. The time. And so uh, the Kabamba is my best uh, news story here, how well it's doing. You see off to the left uh, the longer strands of Kabamba. And uh, the, there was no Kabamba in this tank after it lasted quite a while. In fact, we had some red Kabamba. None of that's left. And the rest of the Kabamba either got eaten by the fish or just slowly disappeared. And now uh, repopulating this from the office tank, uh, we've been able to I reintroduce it here and it's thriving nicely and so I keep trimming it back and point, uh, planting the shorter uh, cut off pieces down into the gravel and making a bigger bunch uh, where they are so uh, it's a pretty tank I really I'm, I'm a fan of crowded plants so that the fish have plenty to hide and swim around and so forth and as you can see in both these tanks uh, probably carried away uh, when my wife gets into cleaning up these tanks or straightening them out, she basically takes all those plants out and replants them. Uh, she's the gardener. I'm not a gardener as such. And so uh, when that happens, you get a very different look to these tanks um, based on a, a better organization of planting. And so as just a final comment, uh, really appreciate 
the audience out there. And I'm sorry if I've got some background noise here. The, the washer is making some noise. Uh, and we've got almost 10,000 views of one of my visits with Bruce, uh, my other fish friend, and uh, constantly uh, sharing with my lifetime friend Ray's widow Joyce, a very good friend, and she is so thrilled that we captured on video uh, some of those visits I had with Ray and just our conversation back and forth because she can go out to YouTube and hear his voice and just watch us and she does it quite regularly. So uh, to both my friends, Bruce, Joyce, and uh, my friend Jimmy, he's a, a fan down in Florida right now on vacation, uh, and uh, my friends around the world, Singapore, uh, Ireland, uh, all of you. Mark, good to talk to you, and uh, always enjoy the conversations and the comments. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy the hobby, as I certainly am. Again, I, I'm a fan of having this in my living room so that I don't have to go off someplace to enjoy my hobby, but rather just in daily living here in the living room. Uh, the two tanks are opposite each other in the room, and if you're watching TV as you would you would be seeing the corner tanks. When the commercials come on, you have something to entertain yourself with, and you can't help but uh, gravitate to watch what's going on in some of those tanks uh, when things are boring in other ways. So uh, it's uh, truly a blessing to be able to have both a spouse that uh, not only supports, but actively engages in this hobby. And so I, I really can't say enough about my wife's uh, engagement with this and she comes uh, she comes by it honestly she was not a fish fan in fact she wouldn't put her hands in water with her fish uh, early on but nowadays uh, she talks to these fish and they follow her around and uh, it's really uh, amazing to see that transformation over time And here in the office tank, uh, nothing new except that Kabamba that you see on the left-hand side there. It's just doing great. I have no idea how that works. As you'll see, or have seen in the bow tank, it's doing well there again, which it actually died out and disappeared. And I repopulated it from cuttings from this tank. And uh, that's a really good reason to have multiple tanks with uh, plants that somehow thrive in one environment uh, and yet I don't know why uh, and so it works out well. I love Kabamba. I think it's a beautiful plant and it really grows nicely and uh, all the tanks get exactly the same treatment in terms of fertilization uh, that's CO2, liquid CO2 and uh, leaf zone when I change water once every other week and the CO2 is a little bit every day Interesting thing about that. I don't know uh, where you are, if you're outside the United States, whether uh, this is an opportunity for you or not, but the um, company here in the United States, which I've been very pleased with, the service, uh, is called Chewy, C-H-E-W-Y. And uh, recently I've had some very good fortune with replacing that CO2 and uh, the leaf zone in terms of pricing. Uh, they deliver quickly and they usually have some type of deal going on uh, which has been very... <laughs> talking about saving money. If you go to a local store an 8 ounce bottle of that CO2 is going to run you anywhere is like 12 to 14 dollars. Uh, a 16 ounce bottle from Chewy it runs in the uh, 8 dollar range maybe uh, and so if you do it by subscription, in other words, allow it to be shipped automatically on any schedule you have, it gets down into the $6.50 range. And for Black Friday, they had a deal, buy two, get one free. So needless to say, I ordered, I think I ordered 18 of them, and saved like $90 off the next best price. And uh, it's uh, really been a big saving. Same thing with the Leaf Zone. I went back and I said, you know, I, I use less of that, but I ordered nine of those, and so I'm good for the next uh, uh, 12 months, roughly, 
and uh, saved a lot of money in so doing. You see the Black Mollies here doing very well uh, as they always have. Uh, you saw that better down in the corner. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, that's the blue better. And he's doing this one. And this is the blue better in the office tank. They're so hard to capture. They keep moving around and getting into the shadows. I'll give you some idea. Again, that was uh, two ninety nine better. Over Hidden Reef, just across the river in Bristol, Pennsylvania. And he's doing just fine here. The Amazon sword plants in the front, those are the baby ones that came from the plant in the back. And I have to thin this out, of course. It, it's gotten to the point where uh, it needs a little bit more room for the fish. <laughs> but I love the way it fills in. And, of course, it certainly makes for a good breeding tank. Plenty of place for babies to hide. And the live bears I have in here are the uh, guppies that you see there, the split-tail guppies. And uh, there, there's that blue betta. Uh, and I still have... A uh, brick red sword tail, female sword tail, that has looked like she has been pregnant from the time I put her in here months ago. And she just does not drop her babies. Now, I had two of these females that are just huge. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not going to be a good picture, but she hides that there most of the time. Uh, it's, I don't understand that. So if anybody can explain it to me, how they can hold on to their uh, developing embryos that long. Um, I don't know. I did uh, the other female swordtail, which was as big and as pregnant as this one was, is. Uh, I, in, in death, she was just about died, uh, I squeezed to see if I could squeeze some babies out. And they were eggs. They weren't babies. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Anybody can explain that? Please help me. And the other thing that's an interesting question, as you can see up toward the top here, my filter has got a strong flow of water coming toward the front. And the fish just love swimming upstream, as it were, in that flow. Now, they must be using a lot of energy, as you can see here. And so, what's with that? I mean, you would think that they would be uh, conserving energy, as opposed to just sitting in that stream and having to, to work so hard. Uh, it's not like they're moving forward, they're just holding their own in a stream of water coming out. And so, in nature, uh, quite often if you're fishing, you look for rest areas for the fish uh, to hide behind so that they don't have to fight the stream while they're waiting for food. So what's going on here? I don't know.